Hey everyone, my name is Archie Mason. I want to personally invite you and your family to join us during Easter week as we go along this road to resurrection from Sunday to Sunday. Now first off, we have Palm Sunday service March 24th at 8, 9, 30, and 11. This service is going to focus on the triumphant entry of Christ into Jerusalem the week before he is crucified. Next, we have something new we're doing that I'm really excited about. On March the 25th through the 29th, we'll be going live on social media at 12 p.m. for the Holy Week. We'll have a short time of worship, maybe one to two songs, and then I or one of the other pastors will give a short message teaching each day on the timeline of the Holy Week. This will be a great opportunity for you to stay reminded through the week leading up to Easter, being able to watch at home, on your lunch break, or you can watch on replay later that day. You'll be able to watch on Facebook, YouTube, our CBC app, or you can go to live.centralbaptist.com. If you'd like to participate with us in person at noon, our doors will be open for you. Next, we're going to have a time of worship, prayer, and preparation during our midweek service in the worship center, March 27th at 6.15 p.m. We'll gather together to pray and ask God to move among this place Easter weekend. On Friday evening at 6 p.m., March 29th, we have our Good Friday service. Child care will be provided for birth through pre-K. This will be a great time together as we take the Lord's Supper as a body of believers and we focus on Christ's crucifixion on the cross, the ultimate example of sacrifice and redemption where Jesus died for you and for me. But oh, my dear friends, we know the story does not stop there on that Good Friday. We know a couple days later, it's Resurrection Sunday. Last but not least, we have our Easter weekend. We'll have four identical services starting Saturday, March 30th at 5 p.m. Then Sunday, March 31st at 8, 9, 30, and 11, we'll have child care for birth through pre-K. We'll have live worship in the worship center and our family life center, all four services. We're so looking forward to witnessing what God's going to do during the Holy Week. To stay up to date on what we're doing, be sure to follow us on social media and go to centralbabbis.com slash Easter. We'll see you then and be sure to invite someone to join with us. If Christ chose to rise from the grave with the marks of crucifixion, why would we be ashamed of our scars? Mm. One morning on live television, my guest, instead of answering my question, turned the tables and said to me, Sheila, you sit here every day asking how we're doing. How are you doing? And she meant it kindly, but I wasn't prepared for it and I hadn't time to pull up that wall. And I fell apart on oh. national television. And by that evening, I was in the locked ward of a psychiatric hospital. Oh, it's like a fire in my bones to be able to say to believers, even when you're struggling through such difficult days, don't give up.
Hey, Central family, we're so glad you're joining us for worship, and we're glad to be with you this morning. If you're new or have been around a while, get connected to what's happening here at Central. Just text the word CONNECT to 870-935-1950 and follow the prompts so we can get you connected to what's happening here at Central. There are so many great things happening here at the church. Follow us on social media, visit our website at centralbaptist.com, or download the Central app to stay up to date with all things Central. As we move into this time of worship through song and the preaching of the word, let's take a few moments to prepare our hearts by remembering the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he came and died on a cross for our sins and rose again so that we could have life in him. If you're here this morning and you have breath in your lungs, God has a purpose for you. So as we celebrate the gospel together, let's open our hearts to what the Lord may have for us today. Our prayer for you is that this is a time where God speaks to you and moves in your life. God bless. Hey, good morning, good morning, Central. Happy Palm Sunday. So good to see y'all today. As we're kicking off the beginning of Holy Week this week, we're gonna commemorate Palm Sunday when the people lined up the streets of Jerusalem and they shouted out. They said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that word Hosanna literally translates, it, it, it translates to mean, save us. And so we're going to sing about and to the God who came to save us. Amen? Come on, y'all. Let's put our hands together. Let's look alive today. Here we go. Come on.
our God has done. Come on, every voice. Remember those walls that we call sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But He came and He died and He rose. And those walls were rubble. Those giants we call death and grave They were like mountains that stood in our way But He came and He died and He rose Those giants are dead Come on church, this is our God Let's sing it out And this is our God, this is who He is He loves us This is our God what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross and beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God, King Jesus. The river that fear that took our breath away. Faith so weak that we could bear. Welcome here to Central Baptist Church. If you're visiting with us for the first time, uh, my name is Archie Mason. I'm a senior pastor, so so glad uh, that you are with us today. As uh, Pastor Corey shared with you, we are kicking off the Holy Week today as it is Palm Sunday, and we've got a lot of good things that are taking place uh, this week. We have midweek, uh, or excuse me, midday services each day. Uh, 12 o'clock will be online streaming, so if you happen to be on a tractor or somewhere taking a lunch break or however it works, 
or you can uh, catch it on Facebook later. We'll be teaching through the various uh, days of the week, each day live here at 12 o'clock. So you're welcome to come here in person, be a short time of worship, uh, short teaching uh, regarding that day, and then you can get back to work, or you can catch it uh, live, or excuse me, on Facebook later uh, in the evening. We also have midweek services here in the worship center. We're going to take that night uh, to just do prayer and praise and be praying for uh, Easter weekend, but midweek stuff is taking place as always, so want us. Uh, students, children, adult ministry, everything's going to be going on uh, as usual. Friday, Good Friday service, 6 o'clock. Encourage you to be here for that. And then we kick off the Easter weekend, 5 o'clock on Saturday, identical to Sunday morning. Child care, birth through pre-K will be taking place. So I know that's a lot. We encourage you to invite folks to come with you over Easter weekend. Know if you invite someone, they will show up. Now, we got a few other things that are taking place also uh, here at Central. We've got the uh, Women's Refresh Conference, which is April the 20th. So you can see that on the slide. You can go online and sign up for that. We've got a marriage conference, Better Together, which is in Branson, April 19th and 21st. So space is limited. Encourage you to sign up for that. And then this Tuesday night at Nukes, our college ministry is going to be there. Basically, 6 to 8 is a college short-term mission trip fundraiser is going to be taking place. So come. You can uh, order. They'll get a certain percentage of the proceeds will go. We help send these college students on short-term mission trips. Whew, that's a lot, right? Well, also, we got another announcement this morning. Jacob, will you and Annadale join me here uh, on the plas- platform? This is uh, Jacob Lindley, his wife, Annadale. And Jacob is been, has been a part of Central for a long time since the call to ministry. He's been serving uh, here as our junior high pastor. He has been filling in uh, during the interim uh, since Josh Stevenson left us and went down to Georgia because he's a Georgia Bulldog fan. And so uh, Jacob's done a tremendous job. There's a recommendation that comes from the pastors uh, on the staff, that comes from the personnel team uh, and the deacon body for him to uh, be called as our next student pastor, all right? So appreciate you guys. Thank you all for coming up. Just wanna make sure you get introduced. So you can take your phone, and so our voting open this morning is only for those who are members of the church family from 7 till 12 a day. You can take your phone even now. You can go to the app. It's real self-explanatory. You can cast your vote. Uh, if you're unable to do that, you can go to centralbaptist.com uh, slash, I believe it's vote. You can cast your vote. Or if you're like me in a lot of ways, and you like things on paper, you can go outside out there. We've got some ballots that are there uh, at the uh, at the Welcome Center. We are so glad that you are here today. Thanks for coming, and I encourage you, as much as you can, be a part this week. It's going to be a fun time. It'll be an encouraging time, and I believe we'll see God move uh, today and this coming weekend, Easter weekend. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for allowing us to come. Lord, you tell us that you inhabit the praises of your people. It's the Lord, today is that day of that triumphant entry over 2,000 years ago, Lord, where you came into Jerusalem for the purpose of going to the cross. And so, Lord, I pray today that as we sing that we are truthful, we are honest, that we are surrendered unto you, that we just don't sing from rote memory, that we just don't mumble the words and not really mean them. So, Lord, inhabit the praises of your people today. Holy Spirit, have your way with us. Teach us, disciple us, grow us, mature us. And Lord, as always, I pray that you save somebody today. It's in your name we pray, the name of Jesus. Amen.
still stands, the blood still flows, the work is finished, and hell still knows that the grave is still empty, the stone is still rolled, and you're still high and lifted up, and you're still sick. Sing holy is the Lord, every voice.
mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity and we long for that day amen come on let's sing it there will be a day when all will bow before We long for the day. beside you there is none like you and Lord today we echo the words not just of the people lining the streets of Jerusalem but God we echo the words of all the angels in eternity to say holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come And God, we pray that again, just as Pastor Archie prayed earlier, God, that that wouldn't just be empty words coming out of our mouth. God, that we wouldn't just be quoting something that we are used to saying, but God, that it would be out of true adoration and admiration and devotion for all that you have done for us. So God, we thank you for meeting us here today. 
Lord, we thank you for allowing your presence to dwell within us and to draw us back closer to you. And so God, in the same spirit of worship that we've been singing, God, we pray that we would have that same spirit as we listen to your word today. So God, speak to us. Use our pastor today. And God, may your spirit move in power. God, may your word move in power today. We love you. And we pray this all in the holy name of Jesus, the name above every name, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Again, uh, good morning. Welcome to uh, everyone that's here. And a lot of folks may be joining us uh, by live streaming or by television. So good to have all of you. Let's take our Bibles and go ahead and turn to uh, Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. We are scooting forward, if I can say it like that, moving forward in the teaching through the book of Mark. And so we're going to stay in that all throughout this week, including uh, Resurrection Sunday, next Sunday. So we'll be uh, teaching through the uh, gospel of Mark. This is the triumphant entry. And so the title of today's message is that basically that Christ, he came uh, in triumph. And he came fulfilling uh, prophecy. He came bringing salvation and he came focusing uh, upon the cross. His whole purpose for coming to Jerusalem was go to the cross. Now, across the world in the past uh, few weeks or so, there's been a media frenzy of uh, people that have been looking for Princess Kate. I don't know if you have seen that maybe on a social media platform uh, that you follow or keep up with. She has been away from her responsibilities being of the rural family. There's been a lot of speculation that has taken place. She came out this past week with a very short video, about three minutes or so, I watched it where she described pretty well in detail what has taken place, that she had gone into the hospital for abdominal surgery. Uh, they thought she was cancer-free, but they did, in fact, find cancer. And so now she has been undergoing treatments in regard to that. And she requested from the world, basically, and from the media group to give her time to undergo the treatment for her family, but then also made a statement that the reason that she'd been absent and hadn't said anything is they were processing how to tell their young family about her cancer diagnosis. And so there's just been a lot of hoopla, if we'll call it that, about that. In fact, there were some celebrities that came out and apologized for their statements on social media as they were all wondering where Princess Kate was and what was uh, taking place. You know, as a, as a world, and I know myself, I can't speak for you, but myself, there's always an interest in royalty. I don't know if you, and by the way, King Charles himself is going through cancer treatments, but when King Charles was being coronated that day, I watched the entire coronation service online live. You say, Archie, that does not sound like you. Well, I, I watched the carriage that they rode in that had the horses that pulled it, uh, all the people standing along the highway. And as I, you know, the, as, as the carriage was passing by, I kind of wondered, I wonder how much that cost uh, looking at that, because it was a pretty ornate carriage. You just don't see that uh, every day. And then I, I watched the, the royal attire. Uh, I watched as they were getting ready for the coronation. There were people holding things in front of King Charles about what to say or when to do. Or, you know, sometimes if you're sitting on the front row with me, you got a guest preacher and the music's going, I kind of look at him. If I don't think he's paying attention, usually I say, it's time for you to preach, you know, uh, like that. It's time to move up because they don't know kind of the flow here. And so it was the same thing with him. So there is, a, there is an interest in royalty for me, I guess, just watching. I've just never seen anything like that. Well, 2,000 years ago, there was a triumphant entry of the true king of the universe who came into Jerusalem. And there was a lot of shouting good things, and there was a tremendous amount of people who lined the highways. They were excited that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. But as most of you, I'd say, if not all of you this morning in the first service know that that all changed by the end of the week. Some of that same crowd were the ones that shouted for him to be crucified. Well, what in the world happened? And that's what we're going to look at today. And what is known as a triumphant entry as we celebrate what is known as Palm Sunday, 
really across the world uh, in Bible-believing, Bible-teaching churches this morning. Hey, if you're physically able, would you stand with me for the uh, public reading of Scripture? Mark chapter 11, verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, go into the village opposite of you, and immediately as you enter it, you're going to find a coat tied there, which no one yet has ever sat, untied, and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why, why are you doing this? You say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it back here. And they went away and found a coat tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders were saying to them, what are you doing? Untying the coat. They spoke to them just as Jesus had told them. They gave them permission. And they brought the coat to Jesus and put their coats on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their coats in the road, and others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. Those who went in front and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem, came into the temple. This interesting statement. And after looking around at everything, he left for Bethany with the 12, since it was already late. Let's pray. Father, again, we say thank you. Thank you for loving us always. We cannot ever say thank you enough for your grace and mercy. Thank you for going to the cross, Lord Jesus, and coming out of the grave on the third day. We are here today. We are exalting you and celebrating you, Lord Jesus, and no one else or nothing else. Lord, it is all about you. So, Lord, have your way with us today. Holy Spirit, teach us from this passage. I know many believers are gathered here today. They have heard this passage many, many times. Holy Spirit, may you speak a freshness into our lives this morning. Will you disciple us and help us to grasp and understand? And, Lord, maybe show us where we can be standing on the side of the highway, waving branches and throwing coats down, but mm, not actually meaning what we're doing. And so, Lord, may you stir our hearts this morning. Lord, as always, I pray that you save somebody today. It's in your name we pray, the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Please be seated again. Thanks for standing for the uh, public reading of Scripture. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he comes fulfilling prophecy. This is a, uh, a big deal here. Whether we grasp it or not or understand it, that the Lord Jesus Christ is very intentional, very detailed, And fulfilling the prophecy of the Old Testament comes out of Zechariah chapter 9. But also, too, we got to grasp and understand this, that the Lord Jesus Christ, that, you know, he finds his way here. He's at Bethany and Bethpage. And if you go back and you begin to read in Luke and you begin to read in the Gospel of John and even you take the Gospel of Matthew and you can uh, uh, take those Scripture passages and really it's not necessarily gaps, but you can begin to chronologically kind of walk through here. We see that the, the Lord Jesus Christ that there in Jericho, this is where Bartimaeus, a blind guy, that he heals a blind guy. Now, for three years, the Lord Jesus Christ has been walking on this earth. He has been performing miracles. He has fed the 5,000. He's fed others at other times. He raised, he raised the widow's uh, son of name uh, back to life. Um, so he has been doing so many things that would authenticate the gospel of who he was as a son of God. You know, as we've been teaching in Mark, he even said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. He, he basically stated equality with God early on in the gospel of Mark. And we know even then, back then, that they were really trying to formulate how to kill him, how to destroy him. We know that in in John chapter 11, he raises Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus had been in a tomb for four days. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, uh, he said, come out. And then he said, unbind him and let him go. And there were those there, Jews, who became believers when they saw it. But there were also those there who did not choose to follow after Christ, who go back to tell the Pharisees, and the Pharisees begin to, again, formulate how to kill him. In fact, if you read in the Gospel of John, now get this, there's a guy named Lazarus. We probably all have a presupposition, we'll say, about how old he was. We have an idea. We have an opinion about maybe how old he is. So we know he's a brother of Mary and Martha. You know he's there with them. So I got this idea. He's kind of young, somewhat, not like young, young, but kind of young, whatever. And uh, <laughs> I mean, so he gets sick and he dies. And they put him in a tomb. And he's there, his body's there for four days. The reason is because there was a, a tradition or a, 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 a cultural thing that they would say the spirit would hover around the body for three days. But after three days, it's gone. And it's kind of a weird deal, okay? No truth to that, but it's a weird deal. And so I believe that's why it was actually four days. And 
And so the Lord comes and he raises him from the dead. Now, can you imagine you've been dead and now you are alive physically? Can you imagine the people who are at your funeral, who saw your body, who want to come around and poke you with their finger, who want to touch you, who want to, t- who want to ask you questions like, what was going on while you were dead? What was happening while you were in that tomb? You got all of this that's happening and taking place. And would it make, there's only one right answer, okay? So get ready for it. I'm going to give it to you in advance. Would you be so mad at Jesus for raising a young man from the dead and giving him back to his family that you, in fact, would want to kill Jesus? And as the Bible states, they wanted to kill Lazarus. Now, would you want to do that? The answer is no. But the Pharisees did. The Bible says they wanted to kill Lazarus. They hated what was taking place and what was going on. And the people had heard about this. The people had heard about the raising of Lazarus. And in fact, in the triumphant entry, scholars will tell us there's probably as many as 2 million people who are there. And so when we read through the passage here and we we walk through it, the context is you got to realize there is probably thousands, if not, Maybe 100,000 people. When the Bible says they're going before him and behind him, there is folks everywhere who is shouting Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible tells us that he enters in. We know that it's there right before this happens. We have in John chapter 12 and Mary anointing his feet with the costly perfume. And uh, we see... uh, what's happening with uh, Judas Iscariot. He's mad, getting ready to betray the Lord Jesus, all that taking place. And he tells him, he says, go into a village and you're going to find a coat. When you read in Matthew, and anyone who is an animal person, if you're an animal person, and, uh, okay, for example, we have this pony, Christmas pony, who had a baby pony. And the baby pony is as mean as anything I've ever seen in my life. It takes about three to four grown men to get a hold of this baby pony. But here's what we know, and it, you don't have to, I mean, it's just common sense. If we want to catch that pony, we got to have mama. Because that baby pony is going to go wherever mama pony goes. And we've learned to get mama pony and baby pony kind of, because we can hang on to mama pony and get them kind of hemmed up in a corner to get a hold of the baby. Now, when you read in Matthew, it says, well, there's a, a mama and a coat. Everybody knows you, got it. you need both of them together for the young one to cooperate. And so he sends them, and, and you get this. If you were to, <laughs> if you had a horse and a coat tied up somewhere, and somebody you did not know came up and began to untie that, any of you standing around would go, what, what are you doing? You're going to ask that question because they know whoever's untying that coat, like, they're not from here. So I don't know what they're doing. But then here's what's unique. Jesus said, you tell them the Lord has need of it and they'll let you have it. And so they say that. And in fact, it does. So scholars will tell you that that the Lord knew providence of who he was, 100% man, 100% God. He knew, and that most likely those folks there were believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so they said, yes. And he said, the Lord has need of it. And so they untie it. They bring it back. And... And what we see, it was just as the Lord said, this was a, uh, to have a coat was a place of, it was a place of respect. When it says no one has ever sat on it, it was a place of respect. That was a, it was a big deal to honor someone to ride upon an animal that has never been ridden. Now, now if you're also an animal person, I keep thinking about, because I got stuck in my head, that baby pony, it's so mean, I'm thinking, there is no way I'd get on that thing uh, out there, you know. You don't even think that's funny, do you? You figure that one out. And, and I think about the Lord Jesus, and you just knowing this, but it was a big deal. Why is that? Because he was fulfilling Zechariah chapter 9, starting in verse 9. Because the Lord said, he said, your king is coming. Your king is coming. And he will be upon a coat and he will come in humility. Very detailed. Now, 
You can read something into a text of Scripture that's not there, and then you can believe it. And you can have a very strong belief that a text of Scripture says something that it doesn't say and be very strongly, sincerely wrong about the text. We call it, in preaching, it's called text-driven preaching. You just let the text speak for itself. You don't read something into it. So if you ever hear me or one other guy say, outside historical sources say, it can be from Josephus, it can be from something else, or something that was written back there. It's not the inspired word of God. So any, to me, it's almost like any Jewish person should have understood that the Messiah, the king, was going to come upon a coat, and he was going to come in this way but in reality, what happened, there was a lot of excitement that was taking place on this day. But in reality, what happened is, was they missed it. And I'm going to show you as we begin to work through this. So he comes fulfilling prophecy, very detailed about what was going to happen according to Zechariah chapter 9. But he also comes in triumph, and he's bringing salvation. Now, this is a good thing, okay? So even though I believe... I think we see in the text, is that the people that lined the roads that did all of these things missed it. He was still coming, bringing salvation. And we see that the day of Pentecost, he was still coming focused upon the cross. So the Bible tells us there in verse 7, says they brought the coat to Jesus and they put their coats on. That was a sign. There were two things that, that really was happening on this road in a way. They were receiving him as their king, in a way, and they were receiving him as the Messiah, in a way. So anytime that you use coats, so I used to watch, and I still, I caught myself watching Gunsmoke the other day, black and white film, was on something, and so I was going, just watching a short episode of that. But the, the thing of chivalry, that used to be, if you watch an old western, there would be a lady walking across the dirt, road. Are y'all with me? Anybody with me? Because you know if you're not, I'm going to change this at 9, 30, and 11, by the way. Okay. So, but the guy would take off his coat. He'd lay his coat down, and the lady would walk on his coat through the mud hole. Come on, really? It was called shiver. It's like opening the door for your wife or something like that. When a person would take their clothes, their coat or something, and they would lay it upon an animal. Animals are sweaty. They stink. So whatever you put on them, you're going to smell like that horse when it's all over. That was, a, that was a sign of surrender. It was a sign of basically saying, one, one uh, commentary guy wrote this and said, he said it was almost like a way of saying, we will lay down and let you walk across us because we are surrendered unto you. It was from the Old Testament. This is a way that, that kings would come into a city, but but usually what happened when a king came into a city, he did not come necessarily riding on a coat. He came on a white stallion. He came, nothing wrong with King Charles riding in, I believe it was called the Diamond Jubilee uh, stagecoach or whatever. Nothing wrong with that. But that's generally how a reigning monarch that has been victorious that has dominion or has authority, that's how they come into a city. They come in that way. because really, But that's not how Christ came. He comes riding on a coat. And so the people, seeing this because they had heard. You know, the Bible tells us in John chapter 12, I believe it's 12, I don't think it's 13, I think it's 12, that it says that as Jesus was coming, picture this, thousands, at least thousands, maybe 100,000 or more, lining the streets before and back, that the Pharisee said, see, that because people were hearing they was coming and they were running out of Jerusalem and they were coming back to meet him as he's coming in. And the Pharisees say, the whole world has gone after him. That's the idea. They were coming out to meet him. So there is a frenzy about what's taking place. People are taking uh, their coats off and stuff, and they're laying them in the road. Others are spreading leafy branches, which is the idea, when we say palm branches, the idea of salvation, okay? It's the idea of salvation. And then, so you see that next part there, nine, front and behind, so a whole, whole lot of folks. And they were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, here's what that means. Save us. 
is save us. Save us now. When it talks about uh, there later, blessed is the coming of uh, the kingdom of our father, David, Hosanna and the highest. It's the idea of, Lord, save us. Save us in the one whom you have sent. Save us now, we pray you. That's a breakdown of that wording. They are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Okay, we sing, we praise the Lord, we exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we do that? Because the Lord says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. You know, the Lord is very clear, we see this in the New Testament, that it talks about if a, an ungifted man enters, which is the idea, it's an unsaved individual enters, and you are proclaiming the word of God, that that person will fall on their face and say, God is in this place. It's out of this, what we call worship evangelism. Now, you say, where'd that word come from? Not out of the Bible necessarily, kind of outside. It's called worship evangelism. That when you exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not talking about anything weird or crazy. But when you, you know there's power in the name of the Lord. Y'all liked that, didn't you? Just seeing if you're awake. It's power in the name of Jesus. Do you realize how many times we, we sang and used the name of Jesus this morning? Do you know that's intentional? Uh, do you know that the Holy Spirit's already, already drawing people to himself through the power of the name of Jesus Christ? Not some Jesus made up, but the Jesus of Scripture, the Son of God. You see, he comes bringing salvation, but... I think what we see in this passage is that the people had the idea they wanted him to come as they wanted him. They, they wanted him to come and remove the yoke of the Roman oppression. Now, let's take that to today. If you haven't noticed this, we live in a crazy time. Now, for some of the older people in the room, and I know I'm older, but some of you are a little bit older than me. Has it always been crazy? I think so. For some of you that experience more history of the world than, than I have, I would say it's always been crazy. When Paul is writing and you have a Roman emperor who not only is involved in a homosexual lifestyle, because many of the emperor's war at that time but then it's so cruel that he's burning christians at the stake on a stick in his garden to light it at night i'd say it was a pretty wicked time we have been in a wicked world now i know all we know of our worldview is what we know today and when i look at the world i'm like it is crazy it is now should we vote for people that we believe are Christians? Amen, hallelujah, okay? Yes. But you need to understand that only coming, the only, the only thing that's going to change stuff. And if the Lord tarries, we're to be active and we're to be involved and we're to preach the gospel. But the coming of the Lord Jesus is what's going to change everything, okay? And, and so... Some of the world today buys into this person of Jesus where he's coming, and the reason he's coming is to eliminate my suffering. He's coming because I'm broke and don't have any money, and he's going to give me money. He's coming, and, you know, and, and uh, man, I've got a sickness, and he's going to heal me if i got enough faith. He, you see, even today, we can go back to 2,000 years ago when those people who were standing on the side of the road shouting, Lord, save us, basically in their mind, I believe, from the Roman oppression, deliver us today. We don't know what you've done, but you raised that young boy out of the grave. I'm sure you can smoke every Roman in Jerusalem. You see, we can stand here today and go, oh, Lord, come, because we have the own we have in our mind the idea of what we think Jesus should do and who we think he is. And if we think and we act and it doesn't line up with Scripture, we are wrong. And these folks, you say, well, why, are you, why are you hitting on this this morning? Because when you go in the Gospel of Matthew, so you got to picture this. He comes in. He's getting ready. He's going to the temple. He's going to look around. 
which is a whole thing in and of itself. And Matthew records us, the people ask. The whole city's a stir. So some of the people who didn't run out, run back, they ask, who is this? You know how the people respond? Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. They respond, Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Before the one who is sent, save us, our Messiah. To now, Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. You, you see, it is very intentional in the inspiration of Scripture. There was a change that had occurred somewhat from there <laughs> to just, I don't know how long that took, to there. Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. I shared with you last week, the Judeans look down on the Galileans, we'll call them that, and the Galileans look down on those from Nazareth. That's why the disciples said, what good can come out of Nazareth? Jesus the prophet. You see, I believe here, yes, the people were shouting, and they were excited, and the Lord was working it out, in the detail of prophecy from the Old Testament. But it seems to be the people had an abrupt change and a change of mind. Many of them did. But still the Lord came in triumph bringing salvation. But not only that, focused upon the cross. It says he enters Jerusalem, he comes to the temple. And after looking around, he says he left for Bethany with 12 since it's already late. So he, he's looking around. Uh, one writer said this. He said, can you imagine Jesus in the temple standing to the side? He has just been riding a coat, fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. People everywhere around him shouting Hosanna, shouting save us, Messiah. Deliver us, Messiah. All the stuff. And really in their mindset, wanting him to come as they wanted him to come. They were not thinking of the suffering servant. They were not thinking of humility. They were thinking of the reigning monarch who would remove Roman oppression. And so we see here that he enters in the temple and he just looks at everything. You know, you get this context now where the Bible tells us too that Jesus wept over Jerusalem. We know what happens on the Monday. We see the cleansing of the temple, but Jesus there standing to the side is just looking and watching. Well, see, folks, that kind of brings us to that place of invitation this morning also. I think we need to evaluate ourselves today as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, disciples, true disciples like we talked about last week. Do we have in our mind a picture of Christ that does not line up with Scripture? Do we have in our mind a picture of how we think what he should do? I don't know about you, but I can be very opinionated. If you ask me, I can tell you what I think. And we may all can fall in that category. But do we have an idea of Christ that does not line up with Scripture, that we want him to do something that we cannot find in Scripture. He tells us to pray. He tells us he'll give us the desires of a heart. We know that, but it's got to line up with his will. But do we have a picture of him that is not how he is? And that's how these folks were here. But here's the good news of that. is Jesus Christ still went to the cross. He still went to the cross. And I can, I'm the personality. I've thought about this. If I was back there 2,000 years, you know, we have a choice. Every Sunday is a choice. Every day is a choice. It's a decision to follow Christ or not. And when I look back at that time, if I'd had the opportunity to be around Christ, I would have had to make a decision. But it, it wouldn't have been like just one time. It had been like every day of following him because there was something going on every day. And, but if I'd also been, if I'd also been a person that was under Roman occupation. 
and all that was happening and taking place. And if I'd been a Jew trained in the Old Testament scriptures, and, and if I'd been standing on the side of the road, and he had raised Lazarus, and he had healed the blind man, and Zacchaeus, <laughs> the tax collector, had gotten gloriously saved and gave, gave away a whole bunch of his uh, wealth, then I would have been saying, Lord Jesus, save us from the Roman Empire. Lord, you can do this. You raised a man from the dead. Lord, you can cast them out. Lord, we're ready for you to rule and reign as Messiah. We're ready for you to rule and reign here in Israel. We are ready for this. And today, think about on the world scene today. When I always say, the world scene is, is set up for the Antichrist to appear. Can you imagine what's going to happen when the Antichrist shows up and brings peace in Israel? We have got people, we have got imams in the United States of America <laughs> praying in a service for the annihilation of Israel. Can you imagine when the Antichrist shows up on the scene and says, I've got the answer to all the world's problems, and he brings peace among the Middle East, among Hindus and Jews and Muslims and Christians and I mean you can think about this can you imagine the people saying Hosanna to the Antichrist save us from all that's taking place <laughs> I probably would have been the guy on that road save us from this Roman occupation I might have been a guy that shouted release Barabbas because the Bible says that people say, we don't want this man, Jesus, to rule over us. You see, all of us have got this pious attitude about, oh, we would have surrendered and done all this. I'm not sure. But I believe I'm sure of this. It probably would have taken the day of Pentecost for me to see Peter preach, to hear the heart language of Bisco and a language I could understand and then hear Peter preach a gospel and then yes it would have been a place of decision you see every Sunday is almost the triumphant entry into Jerusalem where as Christians we can and I know it's on my heart today, from rote memory, sing the words of songs and our heart be so far away. You see, that's where the evaluation comes in for us. And I pray today the Holy Spirit has spoken to us and it may be today right there where you are. Maybe you just need to come to the altar and pray and say, Lord, just renew and refresh. And maybe there's a weight of the past week or the hurts and pains you need to lay before the Lord. And I encourage you to do that this morning. But then also, too, and it's really the most important. If you're here today and you sense the Spirit of the Lord drawing you to receive Him as your Lord. You see, when He went to that cross, He walked that road. <laughs> he goes through the week. He is flogged and beaten. He goes to the cross. He put Him in a tomb. He comes out the third day. He did that for you and me so that we could have life. And the Holy Spirit's the one who draws. If you sense that conviction of sin, then repent. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, take control of my life. That's why he came. He came to die for the sins of man. He came on a beast of burden to serve. He came riding upon a coat because he came bringing peace. Now, the next time he comes back, he's on a white horse. Father, as we pray, Jesus, we just say, thank you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you stayed on the cross for us. And thank you that, uh, Lord, you're coming back for your church one day. Lord, touch our hearts this morning. May we answer the call. <laughs> May we not just stand on the road and shout, words that are words of scripture but not really mean it 
have your way with us this morning, Lord. It's in your name we pray, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we stand, please? Thank you for joining us this morning in worship. If the Lord spoke to you today and you need to talk to someone about the next steps in your faith journey, text us at 870-935-1950 with the word ready and we'll get in touch with you as soon as possible. Again, thank you for joining us today. Be sure and give us a follow on social media and download the Central app to stay up to date and connected with what's happening here at Central. We'll see you back next week at 8, 9.30 or 11 a.m. 